I'm sideways. I've tried to film this several times, but every time I either lose my spunk, I start rambling, and, or I'm too spunky. I'm gonna try and get through this as fast as I can. There's been a church that's been in the news, I've been following this story since it broke on Reddit back in July, been speaking with some ex-members, and then, yeah, let's just get into it. So, Third Day Worship Center, what is it? You can check out, um, if you just do a quick Google search, you'll see there's a lot of mixed reviews. They've got some businesses supporting them. They've got, well, within the last, like, few weeks, a lot of people have been giving it a lot of, like, down stars because they've only seen what's been out in the media, which... We'll get to that later. They're a non-denominational church located in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. It's a flagship church of the Third Day Fellowship of Canada, which means it's the original, it's the OG. Um, it's also a member of the Open Bible Faith Fellowship. Now, if you just read their thing, I'm gonna pu put the little video up here. I'm gonna click on this live stream because this is an important part. So once everything went viral off of Reddit, and the news picked it up, and you probably saw the Kingstonist article and whatnot. Once they started to get controversy and criticism, they wiped all their live stream archives off of their little archive website on like livestream.com. They used to have videos from like 2014 or 15 all the way to, well, whenever the news broke. I think it was September. Yeah, so that's what we know. Uh, their Twitter was also, I think, yeah, that also quit after the articles were breaking. Again, we'll get into that later. So if you look on their live streams, you'll see that the music's super loud and super fun. And well, they're not actually dancing around and stuff now because you're not supposed to do the COVID. So we've got Pastor, Francis Armstrong and his wife Edith started this church back in like the early 90s. It was called Frontline Worship Center at first. Avril Lavigne actually used to attend when she was little. Um, so like that's fun. They've got a lot of different ministries. They had a children's home in Guatemala, which like I don't know what it is now. I actually I do know what it is now. It's a COVID distribution center. So they're getting, you know, medical supplies, food and whatnot. They do a lot. And if you check on their CRA website, they give a shit ton of money to these third world missionary type organizations. They do a lot of relief work. It's also important to note that they have a private Christian school that is it says on their website that they're using ACE education. And if you don't know what ACE education is, it's basically accelerated Christian education. It's not accredited. Um, it's caught fire for being racist, homophobic, um, not scientifically based. It's, it follows young earth creationism, evolution's false and all that kind of stuff. So we don't know to what extent that school is using ACE education, but it is just says on their website that they use it. So we don't know if they're actually using it for like science or just like English and math. They have a Bible school. Someone told me also that they used to have a dance team, which I think is pretty cool. So they do all this good relief work. They've got a lot of different things going on for them. They've got a lot of members. They've got crazy fun looking services it's not so bad what's the fuss so what's the problem we're gonna get into that back in july i was scrolling through reddit and i came across this gem third day worship center i my friend goes to third day worship center and has been telling me all these great things about it and i've been debating on attending until i had a conversation with a friend's friend who used to attend the church. She mentioned a lot of cult-like behavior, like telling the members not to take the COVID vaccine. Just FYI, there is no COVID vaccine yet, so I don't know why that's even being discussed. Because it has the signs of the beast in it. Crazy stuff like that. I just wanted people's experiences slash opinions on this church to see if my friend's friend was right or not. Thank you. No, thank you. So I started looking at the comments. I'm just gonna post the ones that I find most intriguing 
And another thing to note is that a lot of comments have been deleted by users and we will get to that. You'll see there's a lot of talk about money and a lot of people use the C word, which we can't actually determine whether or not it is a cult. So people have been saying a lot, apparently uh, you're supposed to donate like 10% of your income, which is actually an Old Testament sort of thing. They tell people who to vote for, which is totally, if that's true, we don't know, it's just an allegation. If that's true, then they should be losing their tax exempt status. But again, we don't know. So that was the July post. Now we're gonna go back to three years ago. Anyone had any weird experiences with third day church on Sydney Road? My friend started going there recently. She's very religious and seems really happy about it. Good. However, I have reason to believe that they are taking a fair amount of money. Again, someone's mentioning money. Why is people, why are people constantly mentioning money? She's a very kind, loving person. And I just feel like they are taking advantage. That's something else. That's a sentiment that a lot of ex members have shared with me. I'm worried because I have heard some off putting stories about third day worship center. Basically they seem like they suck people in and then ask for as much money as they can get. Does anyone else go there? Should I worry? And here's just another comment. Don't they tell you that giving them money will help you get into heaven? That seems like a promise they can't deliver on. Na 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 na, something similar. Na na na. We're gonna get into this because this is where shit hits the fan, in my opinion. I want you to watch this clip. This was a CBC expose from 2006. And I want you to pay close attention to who appears in this expose on televangelists. Welcome back. Every Sunday, televangelists ask their viewers for money to support their ministry. There's one religious TV station that promises miracles in return. We speak God's hand and favor into your life. Miracles are coming, and this is for you and your house. Here from Tokyo. Last night, we told you about Tim Tebow and his experience with the Miracle Channel. Tebow, an ordained minister in Humboldt, Saskatchewan, believed in the station's message, send money and God will help you prosper. His new computer business was floundering, so he donated more than $1,000. But Tebow's miracle never came. He lost his business and his faith in the Miracle Channel. Tim, uh, and that's where Steve Pascolato picks up the story in part two of his special uh, report, Miracles he's for Sale. When you sow into the Miracle Channel, you get a breakthrough Amen. anointing. You get the spirit of Tim Tebow was that's on a mission. True. He wrote that's several true. letters to the Miracle Channel, challenging its interpretation of scripture and its fundraising methods. I started questioning more and more and more. And it got to the point where instead of getting a reasonable answer it was just flat out rejections i they quit responding to me um it, it ended up that i i couldn't speak with them at all concerning any of this and they were not being held to account anyway, yeah. so tebow began gathering evidence he taped hundreds of hours of programs so this would be one of the examples of what we included in our complaints uh, dealing with RSPs and people being encouraged to cash them in and send them to the Miracle Channel, which is absolutely ludicrous. Somebody right now watching, and, and God is speaking to them about RSPs. They've got oh RSPs, and uh, they've got a sizable amount, and it's a security thing. Well, it's not a security thing. Your security is in God, and God's speaking to you to cash those in. This and is, I dare you to do it. This is what happens if these people do cash in their RSPs, and God doesn't come through. Is the Miracle Channel going to be responsible for it? Will they co-sign on behalf of God? So that when God doesn't come through, they will meet those people's needs? No, they won't. Felix uh, sent a thousand dollar gift. And you know, Felix, uh, again, for somebody else. Yes. For, for Chantal, who needs Amen. healing from cancer. And we reverse the curse over her Amen. in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, that the seed that was sown tonight is, is going to unlock that, uh, God, that, that reversing of that, of that uh, curse upon her in Jesus' name. Amen. You see how he attached the seed, which is the money, to the unlocking of that curse of cancer? Who needs oncologists? You just gotta sow a seed. This guy's a genius. I don't know what he's complaining about. 
Tim Tebow isn't the only one with concerns about the station. For three years, Pastor John Wickstrom worked part-time coordinating programs at the Miracle Channel's church. He quit his job and lost faith in the channel. Otherwise, intelligent people are, are just falling for this, like completely, you know, uh, this, this uh, sowing into the kingdom, you know, uh, is giving of your wealth. It's a tenfold, a tenfold reward, you know, you just, you know, you just got to give us, a, you know, that, you know, you, you bring us that one paycheck and God's going to see great things happen in your life, you know, you're going to be, that's, That is coming from a pastor. A pastor. Again, how is this legal? Sow your seed in faith, praise God, and let's win this battle. But again. the Miracle now Channel says it doesn't orders, force people to donate. Its vice president says it's the policy of the Miracle Channel to respect the right of the viewer to choose whether they wish to give or not, without pressure or compulsion. There's something called coercive persuasion. Ooh, hair. Okay, I'm done listening to this. So, you get it. So, Reddit happened, and then it went silent. There was a few more things, and then it kind of stopped. And then... Someone posted these gems. Now I'm blocking some of this stuff because it was removed by Reddit. And any time now since this whole thing started developing, I've been playing like investigator because I just, I find this kind of stuff so fascinating. Um, ever since I've started printing off things because people, and we'll get into this, start deleting comments and taking off posts. And again, it's super sketchy, but we'll get into why. So this one says, beware, was sent this from a family member who attends their day worship center. I was informed that the church has been sending this around and telling their members this information is true. So at first everyone was like, come on, this can't be true. You can read it for yourself. It's basically saying if you mix lemon and bicarbonate, it kills the coronavirus. Again, all weird ass stuff. And then this was posted. So this post has been completely taken down. I think it's because it didn't follow the Reddit policies, but I'm going to show you the picture that I printed off of the feed before it was taken down. And I've blocked out all the names to show you that it was true and that this is a real thing. So this is from the person's grandmother, I assume. And then they sent this, they forwarded it to their grandmother, I guess, um, to the person who originally posted this. If you can comment under the video, if you see this video, I don't know. I feel like nobody watches this channel. Those two little ingredients is obviously not true, but if you could just confirm once again that this was sent to your grandmother, that would help. So then again, more things happened and more posts were put up and they made us do a little third day worship center, Kingston awareness group, because people were getting tired of hearing about it, which it was only like three people, which like deal with it. That's how I feel. This affects the community when misinformation is being spread about a pandemic. So I told you that I've been in contact with several former members. And at first I reached out to them on Reddit back when the first post, this one, was posted in July. And the first thing that I noticed was people were terrified to speak to me. They wouldn't give me their names. I wouldn't give them my name either because like, hello, it's Reddit. But they were terrified to speak out. I now have several people's actual names and like shit getting done. So you can read this again. It's talking about finances, which we already saw that they were on the Miracle Channel being televangelists and well, not they, just Francis. Um, this is a story, actually. I'm going to read this one story. 
they had been talking about expanding the sanctuary and that they only needed 10, confident it was 10, but it could be more, people to give $1,000 for that project to begin. Did the sanctuary get expanded? No. Has it been expanded yet? No. When one person who gave questioned it and asked for the cash back, they were denied the cash. I have since spoken to said individual. Um, so I'll put that up. You can read this for yourself. Again, I've blocked out the names to keep them private, even though I, I do speak to these people on an almost regular basis. He's another person's. Um, again, the other thing I've noticed from speaking with people is a lot of these people were in a weird place in their lives when they came across this church, which like, I don't know if it's deliberate, um, but like just people in general, when they're in a bad place, tend to seek things. And I guess these people just came across this particular church, but like, it's not uncommon for people to go to a specific religious organization when they're say depressed or, you know, move to a new city. So that's another thing to keep in mind. This is the one that I just recently spoke to this person. My experience with the church wasn't overly the best. It was never a person that has been drawn into or been interested in organized religion. So it almost felt as though I was forced to go by my family in a sense, even though I was a young child, wouldn't have much of a choice in the first place. Personally, I've witnessed and dealt with things in the church that would be extremely questionable. A couple of things that stand out when I try to think back is one situation where there was, I believe a 25 to 35 year old man in mentorship. Again, this is all allegedly, but this is an actual screenshot of a conversation I've had with someone. And I have this person by name on Facebook, um, mentorship under the pastor. According to what I was told is that he went to the pastor and said he had heard from God and me at the time. Uh, According to what I was told is that he went to the pastor and said he had heard from God and me at the time I was under the age of 13. He had said God told him I was to be his future wife. She was 13 years old. She was a minor. Um, the only thing the church did about it was tell him he couldn't talk to my family or be near us, but he could still attend. Wow. Again, this is allegedly, but this is what someone on Reddit has told me. And I know who this person is actually identified now. Um, another situation was when a family of the church had found out there were their blank year old blank was diagnosed with schizophrenia and other mental health issues. This is another thing a lot of members have told me about their mental health um, stance on it. They had went to the church for support and in turn they made it into something for attention. Called them up and literally acted and prayed as though their daughter was possessed by the devil. As a child, I was told loving the same sex was a choice. Oh, this is gonna get me mad. And the sin thus ended up oppressing my sexuality in a way that made me not only depressed, but self-harm on multiple occasions because I couldn't figure out who I was within the environment I was in. Other damaging aspects would have been things like how clicky the church can be and how easily it can actually be able to get left in the cracks unnoticed without friends as a child and ridiculed and be bullied for being slightly different or not having the same amount of money as other families in the church. Those things still affect me to this day. So after this person watched my podcast, messaged me again, they said, I'm currently to the podcast and just got to the part where he was told he was gay because he was abused as a child. I actually had the same thing told to me, but it was the reason why I lost my virginity at 14. I was put in counseling with blank after my family had found out I lost my virginity. Basically, what was explained and told to both me and my family was the reason I was drawn to do that before marriage at a young age because was because of sexual abuse I endured under the age of five. It filled my mind with lust and was easily drawn to the devil, etc. I was told even though that masturbation was a sin and the thoughts of doing so were caused by the same thing. Done. I can't, I mean, I'm getting angry now. I know every single one of these people now and they know me 
every single person whose message I shared with you. There's a lot more that I've shared with people, but I'm only giving a few conversations. Um, some people are okay with sharing them, some people aren't. So these were just a few of the ones that were okay with it. Again, they're alleging these things. We don't know if they're actually true, but this is what people have told me. So that's basically Reddit in a nutshell. Then videos were posted that went viral and got the attention of the media. The Kingston is global, the Whig standard. People were calling for Brian Patterson, who's our mayor, to renounce this. People were angry and I can understand why. He used to go to this church. He's since walked away. So after these Reddit conversations, I took to Facebook and I'm gonna put up some of Pastor Edith's things. These are all public on their Facebook, so it's fair use. So I'm just gonna show you some of the things that are controversial that she has posted. Also from Pastor Armstrong's public figure page, the things he has posted, uh, the things the church has posted. Yeah, I think I pretty much got everything. There's a lot of controversial stuff flying through this church. I'm gonna link more of those daily motion videos. Again, there's a lot of problematic things going on. Do not go to the church's page and bully them and say horrible, ridiculous things. We don't know the whole story. We just know what is being said and I just know what I have been told. When these people come forward and they tell their truth, they're telling it because they want something to change and they've kept it inside for so long and people need to know, people need to know. And if you're experiencing this, whether it be at this church, whether it be at another church, whether it be at a, what else, a mosque, um, a temple, uh, some other religious organization, message me and I will help you find a way out and it will help you find resources to help you and to help you identify whatever's going on. Because if you're not happy and people are using religious texts to justify it, that's not enough. I'm sorry, it's not enough. What I want you to know is this story is still developing. I know there's other news agencies that are going to be covering this because something needs to change. I'm gonna have more people on who are going to tell their stories. I don't want people to go against and start harassing this church because that's not how you do it. We're trying to help people. My goal and a lot of the people who are going to come on and who have been speaking with me and who we've kind of formed an alliance, a lot of the people who are reaching out now, they want to help people. If you want to leave, if you're happy at this church or you're happy at a church like this, okay, stay. That's fine. Stay. If it works for you, it works for you. Stay. But to the people who want to leave, you are safe to leave. You're not going to get struck by lightning. Someone told me who left this organization, told me that that's what they thought was going to happen if they spoke poorly about the place. But again, how it gets to that point, I don't know. So anyway, with that, I'm going to, I'm cold. Holy cow, it's cold. Um, I'm going to go hug my chinchilla. He's going to make me sneezy. But at the end of the day, he's so cute. I'm gonna say hi to my birds. They're loud. Um, so please don't be vulgar and abusive to this church on social media. That's not okay. That's never okay. Um, again, everything I said in this video, everything that people have told me is still allegedly. Be nice. If you need help out of a kind of an organization like this, you can come to me. I'm starting a nonprofit because it needs to happen. Also, Happy Halloween. Bye.